Okay, I uh, would like to welcome our next uh, witnesses, um, Mr Michael Connolly and Mr Will Carter. Uh, thank you both for taking the time to give evidence today. I note we've got Mr William Carter. I'm just checking, is Mr Michael Connolly there? Yes, I'm here. We're just with my daughter trying to get the video up so I can <laughs> okay. see you and I can see, I can see right. Senator Dodson at night. All right. Well, he, he's a very important person to see, so I'm pleased you're able to see Senator oh, yeah. Dodson, and I'm sure the other senators will come into view quite soon. Th thank you. So information about parliamentary privilege has been provided to both of you and is available from the Secretariat. For the Hansard record, would you each please state your full name and the capacity in which you appear today? And may I add uh, that Mr Connolly, the committee has received your submission as submission number 43. If you do wish to make any amendments or corrections, please let us know. I'd also like to inform you, Mr Connolly, that the committee has deliberated over your submission. And we'd just like to inform you that there are, as there are adverse comments in your submission, we have respectfully uh, alerted witnesses who've appeared previously uh, before us to be aware of that. Uh, and I just wanted to inform you that uh, the committee has made that decision. So I'd like to uh, invite you both to uh, introduce yourself and please uh, make an opening statement if you wish. Mr Carter, I'll go to you first. Uh, thank you, Senator. Um, so firstly, I'd like to acknowledge elders past, present and future of the Wurundjeri people by joining from their country today, uh, the Wurundjeri and Ngunnawal uh, peoples uh, to whom I belong and all First Nations peoples. So my name is Will Carp and I join you today as an Aboriginal community member with my experiences as an artist, employee and small business owner. Well, I've been involved in a range of work including government and community. Uh, I have established a community control station in Melbourne's western suburbs and formed big teams that local competition and at statewide Koori Carnivals. I've used the flag on our team uniforms to any other Aboriginal art I've owned the Wiradjuri Art Gallery and Cultural Centre and sold Aboriginal flag t-shirts through there uh, when Gooses was the licence holder. I, like many Aboriginal people, have pride in the Aboriginal flag. Uh, I can recall some of my earliest memories of the flag in protest marches down the main street of Narendra, where I'm from. Uh, the flag to me is a symbol of unity, resilience, peace, hope, love and identity. Uh, that is what adds value to the flag. Uh, without Aboriginal people over the course of decades embracing and taking ownership of the flag, it would have no monetary value today. I believe the Aboriginal flag should be free for all people to use and not have unnecessary barriers placed upon it for access. There is enough red tape in our lives without adding more. Um, I have worked as an Aboriginal uh, education support worker in Victoria and through that work myself and my colleagues across Victoria advocated tirelessly within schools to have the Aboriginal flag raised in public schools. Uh, the flag is an instant connection for many Aboriginal people and important in reducing barriers to education amongst other things. A few years ago Senator Thorpe worked tirelessly in her role with the Municipal Association of Victoria to have all local governments across Victoria flying the Aboriginal flag which she achieved. In closing the, Aboriginal, um, closing, the work of Aboriginal people to build the Aboriginal flag's profile over decades cannot be overstated. The flag should be free for all of us to use. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Carter. Over to you, Mr Connolly. Thank you, uh, the Senate Committee. My name is Michael Connolly. I'm a 63-year-old descendant of the Kali Mulawari people. <clears throat> operate our Aboriginal art and craft business in Queensland, have done for 24 years. I'm also a strong advocate for the fake Aboriginal art campaign and the Free the Flag campaign with Laura Thompson and Nova Paris. I have, um, with Nova and with uh, Laura, we have received cease and desist letters from Wham Clothing and our passion is to free the flag for all peoples, all our people, who have fought under the flag, buried under the flag, and have marched under the flag. So my presentation will be about the freedom of the flag 
and the support of our communities Australia-wide. I acknowledge all the communities, all the elders past and present. I acknowledge the land that I live on is part of the South East Queensland traditional custodians of the Brisbane area. And I acknowledge my elders of the Cullerley and the Murawari peoples of South West Queensland, North West New South Wales. I respect your committee members and every other person in the submissions to make this a better way for the Aboriginal people to walk free with their flag and the passion that we have for 49 years. I thank you. Thank you, Mr Connolly. I'll go first and just to introduce to you both, uh, we do have Senators, uh, Senator Davey, who's the Deputy Chair of this committee, along with myself, Senator McCarthy. We have Senator Thorpe in Victoria, Senators Dodson and Senator O'Sullivan in Western Australia, and also Senator Bragg from New South Wales. So I'll go to uh, Senator Davey first. Um, thank you very much, Chair, and, and thank you both for um, coming and giving your time to the committee. Um, thank you, Mr Connolly, for your very comprehensive um, submission, uh, which um, covered a, a, a lot of a, a lot of ground and um, uh, made your position very clear. Um, and uh, I think you have we have received a, a, some really good submissions from across the spectrum, um, and I'm <coughs> finding this committee. Quite fascinating. Um, firstly, to you, Mr. Connolly, in your submission, uh, you did state that um, that once you'd received a cease and desist letter, you tried to contact Mr. Thomas by social media. Um, did you try any other avenues to contact Mr. Thomas directly, either via mail, telephone? Um, through his legal representatives or any other mechanism? Well, when this all started about five years ago, I was uh, purchasing products through Barubri Art regarding the stickers and uh, uh, caps and mugs and stuff of the Aboriginal flag. And uh, Mr Worcester and ourselves, we had a disagreement and I then contacted, he refused to sell many more products. So I contacted by phone to Mr Harold Thomas and Mr. Harold Thomas virtually said that um, he has respect for the work of the family. I'm nothing but a winger, and he doesn't have to supply you with any of his products because it belongs to him. So I'm nothing but a winger, and Mr. Wooster does not have to supply you anything. So just get on with your life. And that's okay. the last communication we've done. <laughs> All right. So um, I, I'm. That, that answers my question, <laughs> that you have had contact with him in the past. Yes. Um, but that the, the, the dispute is ongoing um, insofar as use and contract arrangements and, uh, and that, that, that is understandable. Um, and, and Mr Carter, have you had any contact with Mr Thomas directly or it's all been through? Have you yourself and your, you said you're an artist and employee, small business owner, have you received a cease and desist letter for use of the flag or you just have chosen not to use it? Yeah, so I've chosen not to use it and yeah, I won't be using it until it's resolved. Uh, that's for any, so yeah. Um, in your opinion, uh, Mr Connolly, this is probably um, better for you. In your opinion, has the parameters for use and reproduction of the flag changed over time? It has. It's changed. Like we used to, uh, we work with um, or purchase through Flag World, which are very, very, very nice people to work with. We were purchasing through uh, the Goose's t shirt, um, Goose's t shirt first, when Neil Booth had it, and then he went on to the Goose's t shirt. And then when Wham Clothing became, this is when things start to happen. And I want to tell you this little story that I have in my statement, but I'll tell you because we're on this position. Um, Neil Booth rang me and he said that he had a relationship with Harold Thomas for over 20 years to print shirts, um, hoodies, singlets and so forth. And then he said that Wham Clothing were 
taken over the clothing. Now, Neil died in February 2019. He was not even cold in the ground. And Samil Moore contacted his wife, Belinda, four to five times a day, ran, raven, wanted all her clients, wanted all her financials, wanted all her products to be returned to Wham Clothing for a very minimal fee and anybody else that was dealing with them. She broke down and cried and she rang me and I spoke to Belinda for over an hour. She cried for an hour. So this is what happened. So from that day on, I thought, well, if they intend to bully people, poor old Neil wasn't even in the ground three days and they were, Samuel Moore was just tormenting them and I just, just couldn't get over that. You know, they had a agreement with Harold Thomas for over 20 years to do T-shirts and hoodies and singers, which we purchased and sold through our business here in Richard. And uh, it just broke my heart, you know. So the committee has been made aware of a few um, previous licences. Uh, we understand there was a previous licence with Urubi Art, um, and we've heard a lot of the history with them. Um, we've heard that there was a previous licence agreement with uh, ATSIC uh, and, and now you're telling us and in your submission you assert there was a previous previous licence agreement with Goose's T-shirts and um, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, but... But Goose. But Goose, yeah. sorry. Um, but we haven't um, yet been able to determine or we haven't seen sort of evidence of those previous licences. Um, <clears throat> what we're looking at today is the licences that exist yes. today, which is, um, uh, it's our understanding, it's with Wham, with Gift, Giftsmate and with Flag World, all under licence from Mr Harold Thomas. You have asserted in your submission that um, you believe that the, the, the copyright and the licences um, should not, I'm putting words in your mouth, so please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm trying to paraphrase your, your submission, but, but that uh, the, the copyright and the uh, licences shouldn't exist and, and the flag should be free, used by everyone. Exactly. Does that mean it would be then be uh, allowed to be reproduced anywhere in the world for any purpose and for any profit? I think that as Aboriginal communities, they should be allowed to produce the product of what the Aboriginal flag, whichever they prefer, to do whatever they want in their communities and the pride that they we have had, you know, for years. And I think with uh, the way that we in clothing have seen it, is virtually no, you have to come to us. And if we remove them as a licensee, and then Harold Thomas says it's free, as he has stated from 1971 with Gary Foley, on the day that he marched to the Adelaide Square in uh, 21st of July and said, show this flag as the flag of the Aboriginal people and we'll walk with it. And then Gary Foley took it to, to east, eastern suburbs then it became, under the Aboriginal people, the recognised flag of the Aboriginal people. So Harold Thomas actually give for the Aboriginal people to do so, to walk with it freely. Then in uh, the proclamation of the flag in 95, has given the recognition, and then we believe that the recognition of the proclamation is supporting the situation with Harold Thomas, but they, would, they don't have any license agreements, so therefore it would be free for the people to do what they got to do as long as they do it with an restriction as the Australian flag and the Torres Strait flag and walk together as the three flags as we have to recognise the people of Australia. And I think this is where it's got to go back to. It's free to the people to produce within Australia for support of all businesses in Australia as we do. Um, and I think therein is one of the questions that we're also trying to resolve because, for example, the Australian flag is freely reproduced in Indonesia or China and it's put on merchandise and it's, it's sold here, but made and manufactured in China or whatever. 
but uh, from what you've just said, you do want to see limitations to its reproduction and use. Um, I think what, what we're trying to do is work out how that we can do that while also respecting the artist's uh, copyright as well. We've had many uh, witnesses before us uh, make it quite clear that um, it's very important to respect the artist's copyright um, as we go forward. And, and I'd be interested, Mr Carter, in, in your comments on copyright and um, and the retention of, of the rights of, a, of, of the original artist. Yeah, so I think um, it's really important to ensure that, you know, Mr Thomas holds you know, and remains the, um, holding copyright over over his his artwork. Um, this conference is I'm not sure to be disconnected. Uh, that's okay, Mr. Carter. It's we're obviously getting a senator come in. Please continue. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, so I think um, I think that should be you know out front of mind. Whatever path you know you know we sort of go down. Um, in terms of, um, you know, the sale of the Aboriginal flag, I think, you know, if we take that um, right and opportunity from Mr Thomas and we were to, um, you know, give it to somebody else to be able to um, profit off, um, and when I say profit off, somebody else to have ownership over it and profit off, you know, I think that's, you know, a contradiction to, um, you know, to Mr Thomas's rights. As a you know, as a copyright holder, so um, you know, and I think whatever you know path we go down, it needs to be done in partnership with Mr. This Thomas. This conference and, is scheduled uh, to be disconnected automatically. In no I don't think it wants me talking. Technology. Sorry, keep, keep going, uh, Mr. Carter. Yeah. It is it is an issue at our end, but please continue. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I'll just finish it there. Okay, yeah. I might now go to Senator Dodson. Th thank you, Senator Davey. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and thank you, uh, gentlemen, for your contribution at this time and for your submissions. Um, I'm not going to direct the question to either one of you, so both of you can respond if you wish. What do you think about the possibility of the government actually getting an outcome through its negotiated process with the people you've had experiences with in, uh, in other fields? Do you, is there much possibility of a successful outcome here? Okay, um, Michael here. Um, as we're looking for an outcome to be together with Harold Thomas, Harold Thomas is the number one person of it, according to the law of Australia. The proclamation is the supporting document to that and also the recognition under the three flags of Australia. If we were to have it and accept it, we don't need ownership by another person. We just need as Harold Thomas being the trustee under the copyright, the trustee of the flag, because the flag was not a piece of art that was registered. It was a flag. So a flag is a flag. The copyright is the flag. So if we look at people's getting whatever done in support of the situation we have, if government says yes, okay, I think they, the government will have the organised time to sit with Harold to say, okay, for the people, no licensees, walk with the people for the people to produce the flag in all aspects to support the community, their sporting, their elders, their schools, uh, their old age homes and everything, that we can walk with it. So no one would be a person receiving royalties, there's no person that would be selling it for royalties or as for licence. It would be for members of people to go up the road to their uh, printer and print some um, uh, some stickers off, 
and put that up and showcase what they're doing. So there, there's no license like Wham had, 20% plus 10% GST, bang. You know, we would then be supporting our people within our areas and our small businesses as well. Mr. Carter, did you want to say something? Yeah, no, I'll just echo Mr. Connolly's um, comments. I think he's pretty much on the money there. Um, thanks. Now, this is a, probably a, a different question. But what if uh, there's no amicable outcome from these negotiations between the government and Mr. Thomas? Uh, what's, the, what's the future of the flag if the current arrangements continue between Mr. Thomas and these and his agents. So what is if there's a if there's a if there's no outcome here, what's well, the future of the flag if it remains under these current arrangements? Well I think, Senator, as we've seen over the last twelve months, eighteen months, the flag is slowly dying. Mm. I've had people that have come through my business, come to my shop, come to my emails, they are sick and tired of not indigenous people running our country, running our businesses and running our flag, they said, have said to me over the last 18 months, we don't even want the flag. Mm. There's two young gentlemen that run me through their grandmother and they said they have the flag tattooed on the back. They were going to go and get it removed off their, off their blood because what Wham Clothing is doing to the Aboriginal people and with Harold Thomas not having a say Every time that someone goes to contact Harold Thomas, it goes to William Clothing. They virtually tell you, this is how it is, this is what we want. So we've got nothing in the sporting codes, nothing in the schools. We get nothing presented for our people through the schools. They talk about the culture, they present the culture. I've heaps of schools that come from my business. But the overall lookout is they're sick and tired of it. They're sick and tired of having to answer to a non-Indigenous company who has bullied people, cease and assist letters, and told us what to do, when to do, when how to do, when Gary Foley and Harold Thomas in 1971 said, this is the flag of our people who have an implied license for 49 years to bring it to the status of where it is today. So we would like it if Harold Thomas walked the red carpet with us and say, I return the flag to your people. I am the greatest recognition of this, of this flag. And as a lady asked me the other day, she said, if you were given or you had that symbol, how would I deal with it? I said, you imagine the pride of 2.3 million Aboriginal people plus another 5 or 10 million Australian people walking down with that symbol for free to carry, to march, to be free to do it all around Australia, the sporting fields, international sports. I would not want to think, because what they're doing is showcasing the greatest symbol of the oldest culture nation in this country and in the world. This is what it means to me. Thank you, Madam Chair. Did, uh, did Mr Carter want to respond there? I mean, that was a, a very passionate response by Mr Connolly. Mr Carter, do you want to complete uh, Senator Dodson's question as well? <coughs> Um, yeah, look, I again echo uh, Mr Connolly's uh, comments and, and I do see a shift in, um, uh, you know, people's willingness to um, you know, use the flag and, and um, have the same level of pride in the flag that, you know, was only there a couple of years ago. Now, that doesn't mean it can't be restored, um, doesn't mean it won't be restored. And I think the, the, the thing about the Aboriginal flag is that it's a national flag, so even if we, you know, sort of drill it down into, um, you know, different language nations or, um, you know, different groups and that, there's there's more and more groups that are starting to, um, you know, have have flags for their nation or, or create flags for their nation. And I think as we move into the future, we'll see more and more, um, you know, individual uh, flags like that. But but again, there's no unifying national flag. So um, an example of uh, you know, of, of the flag and its importance as a national symbol is, you know, for me personally, when I travelled overseas, like, 
I made sure I had my hoodie and my T-shirts and wore it every day and everywhere. And, you know, it was an opportunity to be uh, seen and recognised and, and connect with other Aboriginal people that were abroad at the time. So, um, you know, and that's, that's on a personal note. And then, you know, as Mr Connolly spoke about the sporting and, you know, the other, the bigger picture stuff, it's, um, you know, there's certainly a place there for it. So it'd be sad to um, not find a resolution but I think the, the ball is in Mr Thomas's court as to his willingness to, um, you know, find a resolution for it. And in terms of um, the licence holders, um, you know, I do not support wham clothing, receiving any sort of compensation. Yeah, so I'll say that. Thank you, Mr Carter. And just to complete that line of questioning from Senator Dodson, Mr Connolly, uh, your comment that you know, in your view, that the flag is dying, I think is an incredibly, um, you know, sad thing to hear, yet very powerful uh, comment by you. Can I just ask, uh, before I go to Senator Thorpe, Mr Connolly, is there, is there talk about uh, going down another path here if if there is no resolution around the current flag? Yes, uh, Madam Chair. There is and there has been talk of a new design of flag. There has been, but as we're finding as through the um, times in the last 18 months that the passion of our youth and what the people have fought the flag for is so ingrained in passion in our people that I can't see it. It'd be like a broken spirit. It'd be like torment. It'd be the breaking down of our warriors that have fought for the rights. And this flag is a unification of the 250 nations that walk this land from Tasmania to the Territory, to Western Australia to Eastern Australia. So we, as Aboriginal people, were gifted it by Gary Foley and Harold Thomas. And also in the Northern Territory newspaper one time, there was even a story there that Harold Thomas said, this is the flag of the Aboriginal people. No non-Indigenous company can have this flag copied for commercial reasons. But now we have, he's turned his tail. He has turned away from the love of the people for the design of the Aboriginal flag. The stolen generation that Mr. Thomas has come from is virtually given the symbol to a non-Indigenous company who has non-Indigenous people has been for the removal of our children, removal of our lands. So this is a very important issue. And we have heard for months that this is not what they want. They still want the flag, but if it keeps going as it is and down and down, it's only worth monetary money. It's only worth monetary funds. It's a bit about the dollar now. It's not about the pride, the sweat, the tears, the pain. It's about monetary. And I'll give you an incident, what happened to me at my shop a few months ago. I was gifted an Aboriginal flag with Harold Thomas's signature on it. Within two days, I had two police officers at my shop demanding me to return the stolen property. And I said, what would that be, Sergeant? He said, the Aboriginal flag that I have a paper here signed by Benjamin Moussa and Samuel Moore that you are in possession of a stolen flag. I said, really? An Aboriginal man who was gifted a flag of the Aboriginal people and now two police officers are here and they stood outside of me and the paperwork there. I produced the flag in their hands and within 24 hours through the Brickley Police Station that was returned to Benjamin Wooster and I was known as the person in possession of stolen property of the Aboriginal flag. How did I feel? How did I feel? Sorry. Will the police come to you shop to take away your flag? Not on. Not on. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Connolly. Um, thank you very much for speaking to us uh, so straight from the heart. Thank you. Senator Thorpe. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and, and thank you, Mr Connolly and, and Mr Carter. Uh, Mr Connolly, I, I feel your pain. I know uh, that you know this brings up a lot of emotions uh, and it's very personal for uh, a lot of Aboriginal people right across this country. Uh, can I ask you both, you've mentioned some examples of people being reluctant to use the flag because they're scared of getting a cease and desist letter. In your experience, can you flesh out what are some of the other negative implications of the current licensing situation on Aboriginal people and Aboriginal community controlled organisations uh, who wish to use the flag but can't? For example, uh, on Aboriginal owned family and childcare services, community clubs, major event organisers and others? <coughs> Do you want me to start? Yeah, if you'd like, brother, I'll speak up. Oh, no worries, um, Yeah, I'll just make a quick comment. So, um, you know, as an artist, you know, this, this country's had a long history of um, Aboriginal art and culture being exploited. And um, knowing that one of Wham's directors is a perpetrator of that exploitation, um, you know, and then to know that, you know, they are now a license holder and still, you know, profiting and damaging, you know, Aboriginal people, art, culture. I think uh, that that for me personally cuts cuts quite deep, you know. Um, yeah, so that's that's all I have to say. About that. Thank you. My uh, so. Senator, um, I'd like to speak on the Bundaberg Health Service in Queensland. Every year they get church done with Aboriginal Torres Strait on the flags on, give it to the people that come in, recognise they've been tested and have the shirt. Wham Clothing contacted it. Now, this is the first licence when they had free for non-for-profit people allowed, organisations. By the time that they'd sent them a, a letter regarding the cost of the shirts they had done, it'd be the new the new license was not implemented. So they virtually charged them the two thousand two hundred dollars. That was the um, the cost of the shirts through Strutty Sportswear in Brisbane, and they had to pay that, or they would give them a reduction in fee if they signed agreement with Wham, a quiet agreement, and they said, no, we won't sign an agreement with you. We're Aboriginal groups, but we will pay the fee. So they paid the fee. Then we have the Kwandamooka Island groups at Fatty. Um, they have childcare, they have an age home set up. Their logo has the Aboriginal flag within it. They were sent cease and desist when which the lady contacted me and they said they will not use the Aboriginal flag. They had to get new wraps for their cars, put all the uniforms and remove the Aboriginal and Torres Strait on the flags, not to present, only as their local Pondamooka Island group groups to support their childcare centres and to support their age care. So they've virtually broken down for the monetary funds. And I'll read you a piece that, in case you haven't read it, it is um, sorry, this amended Mr. Mr. Connolly, sorry, I'm, I'm just going to interrupt for a minute just uh, because we just seem to have some feedback issues. Can I just remind senators and also Mr Carter, could, could you make sure your, your uh, video conferences are on mute while Mr Connolly is speaking? There just seems to be some feedback coming through. Apologies, Mr Connolly. Are you ready? You let me know. Yep. Back to you, Mr. Connolly. Okay. <clears throat> it says the amended license first removed the clause exempting non-for-profit organisations from paying a license fee, and to add all print, digital, and physical media, media which now included, amongst other things, particularly physical, such as, and just listen to this, any horizontal or partially horizontal services including 
naturally occurring or artificial ground, solid dirt, grasses, stone, snow, ice, etc. Any vertical or partially vertical surfaces, including cliff faces, hills, mountains, the whole part of atmosphere of earth, including sky or the air, any building, sporting ground, stadium or arena. This is what their agreement is. So there's no chance of any Aboriginal community having health, uh, supporting childcare on the water, on the sky. They've virtually taken the rights, human rights of Aboriginal people in the whole of this country for this flag to not even be recognised on anything part of our country, of our great nation, of the oldest culture in the world. It's a very, very sad time that we are having. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Corey. Uh, so, can you provide a comment then on what model of licensing or fair use would be the most appropriate for grassroots Aboriginal communities and not for profit uh, Aboriginal organisations, uh, particularly Aboriginal community controlled organisations, that would balance the rights of Mr. Thomas? as an artist and also the needs of Aboriginal people and Aboriginal communities. Would brother like to respond or? Yeah, I don't think so. Um, yeah, it's, it's a tough one. I, I think, uh, you know, there needs to be an effort in acquiring um, the entire licence of the artwork. Um, you know, what that looks like, I'm not sure, but, um, you know, mob shouldn't have to pay for it, you know, regardless. I, I think it should be free for all to use. And um, how we, you know, get to that end point, you know, again, I'm not entirely sure. That, you know, my thinking is it comes back to Mr Thomas and his appetite to um, to see that as, as the end goal. And if that can happen, then, you know, we should be able to use it for free. Yeah. And I think adding to that, is we sat to the table with us as a mediation table for what our organisations, our communities and our children can look at it and say, how do you want to present? How, Harold Thomas, you have given this flag in 71 to stand up for the NAIDOC march in Adelaide. He, uh, they have now removed the Aboriginal flag from the NAIDOC system this year. So we need to sit at the table as part of mediation and say, you give it to the people, now you give it to the non-Indigenous people who they now have taken it from us. We only want it to show it in pride, in harmony and in beauty, to wear it as a blanket or as a protective rug, that once you have that flag around you, you are safe because everybody that sees you with that flag in community know who you are and they will walk with you. So we have to look at it as a protective blanket for our children, our services, our organisations to walk free together as one unity of Aboriginal people in this country forever. Uh, thank you. I just have one follow-up question. Uh, so hypothetically, would you see value in a community controlled organisation managing a licensing system for anyone who wanted to use the flag in a business or commercial way? I suggest that no. no. It's nothing to do with commercial, as we've spoken. As soon as you mention the word commercial, monetary, we're back to where we started, where we are now. It has to walk with us free. Any, if you have, like, like, the, like the Torres Strait have, they have a group that see, oversee it. The Australian government has one for the Australian flag. Why don't we have somebody there to say, yes, we are going to walk with this. Our little community group on 500 shirts. Can you put us in touch with a um, printer that we can get this done? Then they get the money through these systems and they pay for it. And it just is a flat rate of you getting that flag printed on your material, on your um, cars or whatever. So it just says that all you pay for is the cost of getting the printing done, but acknowledged by the person who's been charged by government or by a group 
that would say, yes, you can go, go ahead and do that and let us know and we'll see the presentation of it. If it's done like the average Australian flag is done in a professional way, in the colours that are right and loved and cherished the same way, we then can walk down the street with either flag. No. Uh, sorry, so so would you agree to something similar to the Torres Strait Islander example? I think so. I think it, that's depending on the on the majority of the people. I'm only one person that's stood up for fighting and free the flag, but it's got to come together as the question. Would all Aboriginal people love to have the same as the Torres Strait people uh, recognise group under government, under the proclamation of the flags, to understand, yes, that's what we'd like. So then they say, on this time, we are going to get this made and we're going to support it. And if Harold Thomas has acknowledged as the copyright of the trust of Harold Thomas, this is, and the sign's always up, this is the flag which was acknowledged in 71 by Harold Thomas and actually Gary Foley commissioned Harold Thomas to have that design ready for the mark. So if you put Gary Foley and Harold Thomas's design, they gathered together in 71, 70, 71, as long as that's on the paper, say that this is acknowledging the situation of the person who actually put the design together for us to use. So they still know as that, as Bernard Nommer is for the Torres Strait, is acknowledged all over that he was a designer of the Torres Strait flag. You put that up and say, you are acknowledged. I would love that. You are the acknowledged artist of this beautiful flag. And what more could you want when you've got a beautiful 2.3 million lovely Aboriginal people and probably 10 million what non-Aboriginal people that would love, and they do, they come to be shop, they want to buy the flag, they want to walk. So if we had a group that would accept it as that and acknowledge <coughs> Gary Foley and Harold Thomas, who first come together to put this flag up for the Aboriginal people of Australia to walk in harmony, love, cherish, and togetherness as the nation of people that we are. That would be the way I'd see it. Yeah, and can I just um, make a comment, turn in a thought? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I think, um, yeah, I think if we're comparing with the Torres Strait um, scenario, we just have to be careful because I think there's far more complexities working across um, Aboriginal Australia in trying to, you know, um, have some type of governing body and what that might look like. I think. Um, you know, removal of any sort of uh, financial implications, you know, is a must. And, and again, it gets back to that being free for all to use. I still, you know, I agree there with Uncle that um, the, you know, the, the acknowledgement of Mr. Thomas um, as the creator of the flag um, shouldn't, should never um, not exist and, and should be, um, you know, at the forefront of it. And, um, yeah, and I think um, it needs to just ensure that there's uh, protections in place around, you know, all protocols in place around its use, similar to what there are with the Australian national flag and, and that sort of thing. So, um, again, it's a, it's a fairly complex scenario, I think, and, you know, the end goal, I think, you know, for me personally anyway, is, you know, to see all Aboriginal people to be able to use it freely. Thank you. No further question. Thank you, Senator Thorpe. I'll go to Senator Bragg, and then I'll have a few questions at the end to complete the uh, the hearing. Senator Bragg. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for your evidence today. So, I mean, effectively, my uh, takeaway from what you've told the committee is that you are looking for a form of equivalence with the with the Australian flag that the Aboriginal flag be available for anyone to use. Is that right? Is that pointed towards me? Yep. Yep. Sure. Yeah, agree. Agree. There's no monetary funds of the flag that any community can go up, organisation, to go up to a printer and print what they want for their community without having to go through a licence agreement, a pay extra, a pay a fee, that it added up and adds up. As the Bundaberg system, it cost them the money they never had, $2,200 extra, and they never had that money. 
they had to go and get that money somewhere else to pay Wham for that um, clothing. Where if we had it, as to go up the road to a shirt company to get it done to support your people in health that come and get their uh, checkup free, how good that people will get, come there more, will get more people involved in school, get more people involved in the health system. And this is what you know I see the passion for. Thank you very much, and thank you for your evidence. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Senator Bragg. I'd just like to um, just cover off a couple of things, if I could, in the short time that we have, uh, Mr Connolly and Mr Carter. So, so if I can just go back to um, the issue of um, your view about the possibility of the government acquiring the Aboriginal flag, uh, compulsorily acquiring the flag. Could I just get your thoughts on that, Mr Carter? Um, yeah, look, if, if I yeah, really sit there and think about that, I, I kind of lean more towards uh, that being you know, almost another form of oppression. Um, you know, it, it dis dismisses our sovereignty, um, you know, and, and also noting that we don't have constitutional recognition. So if, it's a, if there's a, a constant, uh, constitutional um, avenue there for the flag to be acquired um, compulsory, then, um, you know, that's, that's my thoughts around that. So I think whatever, um, you know, whatever way forward uh, needs to be in consultation with Mr. Thomas. And um, yeah, and I, I certainly wouldn't like to, you know, and let's be, let's be fair. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to be flying the, the flag and, and, you know, taking pride in it, knowing that it's been taken from somebody you know, it's creator without them wanting it, you know. So, yeah, that's that's sort of where I'm at with that. If, if it was agreed by Mr Thomas to go down that path, would that make it different? Yeah, 100%, yeah. I think that's, that's the only avenue forward, I think. And what about if the government were to look at acquisition of the licences and leave the copyright with Mr Thomas? What's your view on that? Uh, yeah, I have no issue with that, but depending on what the copyright or leaving the copyright with Mr Thomas looks like, so what does that entail? Yeah. So it's all about the details, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> knowing the details, which we don't, but but it's really helpful to, to know your views. M Mr Connolly, would you, would you like to comment on that as well? Well, as I've done a bit of research, and um, I don't think it's about a house in the middle of a road building, I think it's about the recognised flag of the Aboriginal people. And if the government were to step out to pay again to Mr Thomas, which is also paid by ATSIC and the last 49 years of flags, it is still that monetary thing. I think that, as Brother has said, we remain the copyright, we remove the licences, and then we bring it back to the people as what it was in 71. We bring it back to the people. The government can support it and say, yes, this is as what they've done through the proclamation. This is the Aboriginal flag of Australia, recognising what it is. So the point is that do we pay more for it? How much is the piece valued at? Or how much has it, the monetary has come to and what is that piece worth? Or has it come down to the piece of rag sewn together at what value and has it gone past the situation? Does the government have to come again, which they won't like doing? So we have to look at it as perspective of Aboriginal people. Come to the table, Mr Thomas. The government can say, we'll organise that meeting. We'll prepare a document, how it would set up under laws, the constitutional laws of Australia, how it would set up as the free flag to be supported by government and recognised for the Aboriginal people of Australia. And it would become free to use with the acknowledgement of the copyright and the copyright would then be brought down as, yes, you are the licensed copyright and the protector of that of that image and it is free for the people of Australia 
of the Aboriginal people as well. So we then would have to come to the mediation table to see how a law, which I don't think there is a law in this country regarding this, and I think that we need to sit down and say, how could we make a law that we all come out happy, that the original agreement was for the people, by the people, which we proved under implied licence to have it as the flag of the Aboriginal people. Thank you, Mr Connolly. And this is perhaps um, more a bit of a personal question for you, given uh, you know, the, the experience that you've had with the flag over so many decades. And as chair, I, I sort of wrestle with this a little bit. We're coming to the, the 50th anniversary next year of the flag. And one of the questions I you know, ponder in, in the midst of all this inquiry is, are we looking at the, the journey and the story of the flag uh, and is this the beginning where we're at, or are we looking at, uh, you know, the the flag in its past? And I think uh, when you spoke earlier about that the flag is dying, if it continues uh, to be treated in this manner, like the last 12 months, where do you? What would you advise the committee uh, in going forward on the story of this flag? Well, as we've seen over the last week, they're talking about a $2 coin, as we've seen. Now we have the situation where governments or other people are starting to prepare for 50 years. When our people have not been acknowledged as the implied licensed people, we have promoted, we have carried it, and now all of a sudden, this thing's jumping out for 50 years in July next year, even NADOC don't have a recognition. NADOC has removed it. So we don't have a national island Aboriginal day of celebration of our elders past that have fought for the rights of our people under NADOC to carry a flag, recognise the unification of our people for 50 years. But in 49 years as is now, it's come down to how much is it worth? Is this piece of rag is just going to, like this here, this piece of rag will just die to the ground without input from the committee, from the government, and from the, the Aboriginal people of Australia. We have all the clans, we have everybody in every state and territory that contact me, brother, what do we do now? How do we do this? They talk about the fake art campaign, which Beauty Art owns, owes $2.3 million. Why can't I get the $2.3 million and give it to Harold Thomas and say, well, there you brother, there it is, take it away. You've got your money, you've got everything. Now the flag becomes free. So with 50 years next year, and they're all starting to promote who's promoting the dollar coins, who's promoting what they're going to do, who has come to the Aboriginal people for what they wanted for their implied licence for the last 49 years. No, no one's been to the people. It's always the same. No one comes to the people. They go to the people in law above our law. We have L-O-R-E, the law and respect of each nation's people. We don't know L-A-W, we know L-O-R-E, the love of our people, our flag, <clears throat> we love the people and we also love every law of every of every nation we cross. When I cross my lands to go to Western Queensland of the Colony, I acknowledge my mobs as I'm going through. When I go to my mother's land in Garuga, I always acknowledge the mob that I travel through. But no one talks as a holistic as if you are going to have this flag that is us, that has been for 49 years, next year, and no one's consulted with us. What do you want as Aboriginal people? How do you want to showcase it? Do you want to showcase it here? Do you want to showcase it here? Or do you want to just, it's just a piece of cloth that's worth money to non-Indigenous companies and licensee. And Harold Thomas has not stood up and said, no, this is my flag that we give to you and give to our people to walk in harmony to the world, to the sporting, to the passion of everything. And this is what it has to be brought down to the people, by the people, for the people. So just in the final question to you both. So this point in time in the story and the journey of the flag, is it about fighting for the flag or just letting the flag go? Mr Robert? Carter? Yeah, tough question, tough question. Um, yeah, look, I think um, for most of us, there's there's a history there with the flag, and and it means so much to us, and it's it's very personal. 
And, you know, for those reasons, you want to fight for it. Um, and I think, you know, there needs to be, uh, you know, a real effort to come to some sort of agreement with Mr Thomas. And if that can't be resolved, then, you know, it, it may be time that we do look at, you know, other options or whatever that may be. I'm not sure. But, you know, again, like Uncle there said, you know, we need, need to start talking to, you know, talking to the mob a bit more about, you know, what that looks like and, and having a broader conversation about that, you know, because I, I can't answer that for everyone. And, and um, you know, and, and we want to, you know, like we all have an invested interest in, in it, you know, we all feel a part of it. So we all should be included in that journey. Thank you, Mr Carter. Mr Connolly, your final say from you. And on that part right there, as brother says, we have... The generation from 1972 to now. I was born in 57. I grew up in the bush. I didn't know much about the flag until I left in the 80s, went to North Queensland on the bush. Then I realised what it was. And as I moved to Brisbane and made my business, and people in the marches, in NADOC, um, they'd been jailed for it. People come to me to get a flag to lay on a coffin to bury one of the elders. This is it. So unless the government, and unless Thomas comes to the table with the Aboriginal people and the government to make a decision free for the people, I have a lot of people through my connections of my Facebook and that, my social media, my business, they are sick and tired. I've been told what to do, not only by governments and native title and all this, but now by a non-Indigenous company who has a $2.3 million fine for fake art out of Indonesia and has no respect. And I'll give you what he said to me as well to finish this off. He said that, Michael, you have no law. Before I finish with you, you'll be not trading and you'll be back living under your gum tree because you have no law. I am the man that has a law. Your people don't have a law. So this is what I've got for years. I could have went and done something wrong which I went to the police and I had to prove that I was an amical business person of an Aboriginal man. Otherwise, there was a chance of me getting locked up. So I've had to do all this to provide this for the love of this. So if that's not passion about love and share and care and give it to our people to walk in harmony, I don't know what they're going to do because it's just going to roll away. Monetary fund is gone. And as brother says, the flag of the nation, I've got up here, it's in my DNA. It's my colony, it's my, it's my Murawari peoples. Do we have 250 flags? Or do we have this flag that's already implied by our people to walk in strength and passion for what we have? I thank you. Mr Connolly and Mr Carter, I, on behalf of the Senate committee, I sincerely thank you both for your heartfelt evidence to us today. Uh, you've certainly, uh, again, advised us on many different uh, options to look at here, but also the passion in which you bring your evidence uh, is really important for our committee. So our sincere thanks and um, feel free to provide any further evidence if there is uh, uh, anything else you'd like to add uh, at a later date. Thank you both. I would just make one little comment to finish as I wrote. It says, if you are true follow Aaron, do the right thing and return the Aboriginal flag to the Aboriginal people so we can restore and rebuild its cultural worth and let it fly again with pride. This is our just terms. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Mr Connolly, and thank you, Mr Carter. Uh, to the senators, we'll adjourn for an hour. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, thank the you. committee. Thank you all. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Gotcha.